Standing pat on interest rates this week. Uh, of course, that's a bit of a break for holders of or people under, labouring under variable rate mortgages. But higher borrowing costs are a threat to the housing market. Uh, our guest says trying to stop price increases in the real estate market is difficult because of a crippling lack of supply. He says that's the fundamental problem. We're joined now by Barry Fenton, CEO of Lanterra Developments. It's great to see you. Thank you, and I knew you were hosting, so I even got dressed up oh, for you. Oh, you're looking good. <laughs> Thank um, you. Now, of course, you're one of the biggest condo developers in, in Toronto. You're up there, downtown condos. You've been doing them for quite a few years. We have most of that monopoly board covered off. So yes, we, we've been doing it for a long time, and we have a great track record. What something like more than twenty thousand condo yeah, units yeah. you've put Plus, up? Plus, yes, and we, you know, we uh, Lanterra has uh, is involved in other types of portfolios as well. So you you're in the camp that says just lack of supply of housing is the problem. Yeah, I think you know we've been talking about this for a long time. Uh, you know, right now the condo market per se is really doing a nice job by weathering out the COVID storm and the interest rate hike storm. But uh, I think, again, as I've been doing every year when I come on, I think that the market has a lot more legs to go on the upside. And I think patience will really provide uh, success in asset hold of the real estate game over the next couple of years. How are we going to get more supply? I'm thinking in particular <laughs> of reasonably, reasonably priced rental accommodation. Well, you know, it's interesting because we always try to put them in different boxes and suggest that rental is rental buildings and condos are a different class. But the truth of it is, at the end of the day, the condominium classification really becomes a rental building at the end of the day because there's a lot of investors purchasing and they end up renting out. Yeah. So there is a lot of rental. The whole issue of supply and demand is always going to be an issue. So the, I think to build rental buildings today, uh, we would love to do some. But we need to be incentivized by pro provincial governments, uh, the Toronto mm -hmm. uh, City Hall people. We need, we need incentives because the costing to build a rental building per se, you require way much more equity. CMHC has come out now with some concepts mm -hmm. where they'll provide long-term financing at really great rates and they'll, they'll provide more of the financing up front. But overall, when you do the numbers, it's a difficult task to make money at it. So I know I'm simplifying, but if you were to build a <coughs> rental building, you would Presumably, well, could you sell it on? Could you sell it on to a life insurance yeah, company? For sure. or, yeah. But when you think about it, it's a very good point, Andy, because most of the rental buildings that are being built today are being built by pension funds oh. and REITs that own apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. So they have to allocate, because the cost of the land today, if you're building it as a rental building, you can't pay $200 a square foot for land downtown. You technically should pay $50 or $60 when you do the equation of the calculation to build it and based on the returns to investors. Yeah. But when you build something that you're going to own for 30 years, the land ends up paying for itself down the road. And that's why you see a lot of the pension funds getting into the rental business and, and building rental buildings. But it's, they do it for the long term, term hold, not for the short term. I don't quite follow you there. How, the land ends up paying for itself. What do well, you mean? what ends up happening is that if you do a straight condo downtown Toronto, you're going to pay between $150 a square foot for the gross GFA or you're going to pay $200 depending on where the location okay. is. What I'm suggesting respectfully is that when you're building a rental building, you can't pay $150 a foot today to build a rental building because the equation, the mathematical sure. equation doesn't work. But when funds build rental buildings, most people make money in rental buildings because they hold the asset for a long term. Yeah. So they can justify paying more up front for something that if you looked at the number today wouldn't work. But in 25 years, they pay off the, the loan yeah. and rental markets eventually go up rental uh, rates go up so they can justify paying more dollars. That's the problem with them. The main problem with rental buildings is that most people can't afford to pay what you would pay to build a condominium project today. So I guess the economics are different. If you build a condo, you're selling the units, you get all your, your cash back in, Correct. In, short, in the short term, Correct. reasonably short term. Where Correct. a rental, it takes decades. It Take, takes yeah. decades. But people that own rental buildings long term do substantially very well. A lot of um, <coughs> gorgeous cities like Montreal, or I'm thinking Milan, have these apartment buildings that are three and four stories high. Not that high. Is it just hard to build that in Canada? I know the location is a big Well, problem. first of all, it's going to be hard to find trades to do that type of work because uh, most trades that, I mean, there aren't a lot of trades flo floating around today to do projects. 
believe it or not. So they would rather do mass than do little. So that's one concept. The other concept is that the land acquisition prices in Toronto today, you have to justify getting a certain amount of gross floor area on it mm -hmm. to, to make money. Yeah. So I get it. I, I mean, I love Milan. I love the food, by the way. I mean, there's some really cool cities in the world that have smaller concepts yeah. of, of, of accommodation. But economically, it's going to be tough to make it work. And I guess a lot of those buildings were built a long time ago. I don't even know if it would work now. Correct, correct. Yeah. Um, so tell us, what about modular housing? That's not a thing you do, but I know that our, pro our Premier here, Doug Ford, is working with New Brunswick. They're, they have a big industry making it. Um, prefab housing, is that a thing you've explored? It's not really uh, it's what not you do. It's not our thing, but yeah. I'm well aware of uh, someone that is now going to be building a prefab apartment building in the Scarborough area. And it's very, very interesting because when it comes in prefab, you can build it differently and you can do different cores. And it, it's an interesting concept. I really haven't studied that concept because I'm like a shoemaker, right? I know how to change a heel. I know how to fix the leather. And we've been very successful at the, the model that we present, which is basically, you know, we start from scratch. We know that we have to build it over two years or three years, and we know what goes into it to build it. What's the trend in condos in Toronto right now? I think there was talk of people not putting on balconies anymore. Is that is that uh, happening? Well, or? it's very interesting because we just we're very uh, we, we've been very successful at a project at Fifty Scollard, which is next to the Four Seasons Hotel, and it's a spectacular building, and uh, we only have two floors of balconies, hmm. which is interesting. And you're probably getting something like. Twenty-six, twenty-seven hundred dollars a square foot. So these are high-end people moving into buildings where we don't have balconies. And people aren't demanding them then, in some cases. Not so much. When you when you actually look around and see how much people are actually spending in time outside on the balcony. Yeah. If the project is built correctly, Andy, the common areas and the area of where you are located in Toronto, for example, if it offers all of those other amenities, people don't really gravitate to outdoor balconies. One thing I have to ask you as well is, um, uh, any new condo, are you putting in electric car charging stations? Do you have to do that now? Well, we do it now. It's yeah. A, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's a lot more of that going on right now. The other interesting thing is that in some of the new projects that we're launching in Toronto, we're not even being required to build any parking. Oh. Which, which is kind of very interesting Amazing. because in the old days they would have ratios of two parking stalls per 800 square feet or 700. It's pretty amazing. Where are those people going to park then? Well, they're not going to park in their, in their buildings, but a lot of people don't really require cars anymore. It's interesting. Yeah. We always kind of try and take the condo market look, which is something like, you know, 30 sales a year. We try to make it into an economically bigger talk. The truth of it is, is that we're talking about 30,000 people. We're not talking about, you know, 3 million people that, that mm -hmm. Ontario has. So it's a small ratio. One suggestion I have for you, and I know you didn't uh -oh. come here looking for my ideas. You're not taking my jacket, no. <laughs> <laughs> Andy. I, I rented an electric bike, and I asked the guy, well, what do people in condos do? Because it must be hard. To, these things are expensive, and you're not allowed to bring it into your unit in some cases. And he said a lot of condo buildings don't have safe parking for the electric bikes. Is that a thing that's come up, or it's not an easy thing to solve? Maybe. You know, I, 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 I have an electric bike but uh, I've never really been successful in riding it. But the truth of it is, you can't bring it up, it's too heavy. Yeah. So they basically have lockdown stations down in the, in the basements of the, uh, the condominium projects, and you lock it up. I mean, I'm more concerned about all the cars that are being stolen now in, yeah. in, uh, you know, in the Toronto marketplace. Incredible, yeah.